Gospel Family Church, we are fulfilling the Great Commission. Go ye into all the world and make disciples. Anyone who would like to come and join us on our missions, you are invited. Anyone who would like to give financially, you can use the information you see below. Also, I just want to say thank you for your support in advance. God bless you. But in order for us to be able to eat the food, praise God, it has to be heated. Amen. We can't eat anything that's raw, praise God, because in eating that rawness, amen, it could potentially make us sick. So we have to wait, amen, while the fire, amen, is burning, praise God, for the food to be done, amen. Sometimes they even give you a particular temperature that the meat should be, amen, before you can even eat it, amen. So I feel like in this season, praise God, we're just being heated up, praise God. Some things in us, amen, are not yet done. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. But he allows these situations for us to see that we are still yet undone. Yeah. But according to the word of God, amen, we've already been perfected, amen. The victory has already been won, praise God. So even still in our seemingly undoneness, amen, he shows us his love. And I need you to begin to see some things, amen. I was talking to somebody the other day. I said, if we continue to be comfortable, amen, we'll just be comfortable. We'll be fine where we are, amen. There will potentially be no growth, praise God. We will be in a spirit of retardation. But God has not called us, amen, to live in that state. He wants us to grow. And therein lies his love for us. And in the midst of this situation, I'm like, Lord, I'm not going to question. <laughs> why? Because I already know the answer. The why is, why would something like this happen to the saints of God? Why would we have to go through the things in which we go through? Why do we have to endure such trials and tribulations in this season? Well, his word says that he come only to make us what? Stronger. But I found out, saints, the why is so that God can be glorified. Hallelujah! Right. When a blind man, amen, right. was crying out, praise God, the people said, well, who was it that said? Even saints be like, who said? Was it the mother? Come who on. was it the father? On, right. Somebody had to send for this situation to occur. Come on. Jesus said, well, listen, nobody said the situation occurred. So that God could be glorified. Is that not his love? Amen. To be able to take somebody to the next dimension. Yeah. To be able to take somebody to the next level. Amen. The fire has to be turned up. Hallelujah. Just a little bit hotter. Amen. Because you started getting used to that temperature. You started operating in that temperature of that undoneness. And was not nourish anybody. But even in that, amen, we begin to learn some things. That God is faithful. That no matter what the temperature is, amen, no matter what the season is where it seems like it's arid, amen, or even when it seems like it's just wet, praise God, that no matter what, God remains faithful. That's what I'm learning in the season, Pastor. Hallelujah. But sometimes we know it. But you got to learn it in a different level. You got to learn it in a different situation. Amen. You got to be able to learn it in a different season. Praise God. I was watching something on the television. Let me check my time because I got five minutes. I don't know how to work this gadget. Amen. I'm almost done. And his son had died in New Orleans back in the late 80s. Son was 18 years old. They killed him during a drug deal. White man. He went to the hood. Somebody said he went to the hood. He went to the hood every day and passed out flyers to try to find out who killed his son. Big black guy said, I can't let him walk the hood like this. He's going to get murked. So let me go and help him out. He went with him. Then before you knew it, hundreds of black people was walking with this.
this white man to try to help him find out who killed his son. He started walking in purpose. He was a pharmacist. He went from a pharmacist to a detective. Amen. It was a crazy situation that you would lose your child but find purpose. After he found out who killed his son, they did an interview with the police force. One of the police said, I've been on the force for 40 years. I cannot tell you one person I have helped. He said, but this person, and I'm going to leave. He said, but this person helped thousands of people because after he found out who killed his son, he found out who killed other people's sons for them and brought them closure and brought them comfort. We don't know what God is trying to do in the midst of our situations, but that's how he continues to show his love towards us. Amen. We're a going to see the light. And in the light there is my love. I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Lo, I'll be with you until the end of the earth. Amen. Minister Aliyah. Amen. 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 Thank Hallelujah. you. Glory to God. Hey, I'm on my side. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. I have five minutes to talk about that love. Hmm. Which is, um, it's a lot. You can talk about the goodness of the Lord all day, but we're talking about his love. The first thing that came to mind was, um, when I think of God's love, thank you. Yeah. When I think of God's love, sometimes I'm always thinking that I'm not worthy. That's what I think sometimes, that I'm, I'm just not worthy. I remember the first time I really, really felt it. Thank you, uh, Oh, the first time I really felt it, I explained to pastor in the church. It was the time where we were uh, being ordained at Episcopal, at the Episcopal Church. And Shepherd Mother and uh, had us get robes made and all that other stuff. And I just felt like I am a total mess. And I know my voice is a little funny, but I'm good. But um, I just felt so unworthy, like the robe and the ceremony and all that other stuff. And that was the first time I really felt God's love around me. Like, I kept thinking, like, this robe is too much or this ceremony is too much. Like, I don't want to do it because I just didn't think I was worthy. But just like our leaders, every time we think we're not worthy, they push us forward. Like right now, I don't really feel worthy to even be up here. But my pastor asked me to do it, so that's why I'm doing it. Okay, um, First Peter um, 4, 8, above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sin. And um, thank you. And um, usually when I feel like that, all I get is love. In my mind, sometimes I just feel like. I was explaining it to uh, Pastor uh, Sonia that I just feel like God is his big dad on the porch, and I'm scared to come in the house. And you know, eventually he would have to come in the house, <laughs> but I just don't know. You know what kind of punishment I'm gonna get? So I just stay outside. I stay at my friend's house. I'll be like, "Can I use your bedroom? I won't come in the house because I just feel like you know, come on, come on. I'm gonna get it. But every time I come in the house, I never get it. My God, I never get it. So. And it always seems like he loved me on the, he loved me at the worst times where I should be punished. I'm never punished. Mm. Mm. And I thank him for that. And I spell in the scripture that I'm not the only one that he loves in a weird time. Wow. Right over in. over in um, John 11. In John 11, I'm just going to keep it simple and start at five. So I'm going to start at four. It says, when Jesus heard that, when Jesus heard that, 
he said, and this is when Jesus had heard about Lazarus dying. This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Which Pastor Rashid was talking about the Lord being glory in certain situations. But it says, now Jesus loved. We're talking about love. He said, now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, he was sick. He abode two more days. First he said he loved them, but then he stayed two more days. Mm. And I'm just like, Lord, you said love, but then you stayed two more days. But I know why he stayed two more days. And that was because he loved them. Mm. It wasn't no doubt in his mind that he loved them. And it wasn't like he was just taking this old sweet time. And she also talked about questioning God. I believe you can ask him questions, yeah. but I never believe you can question him. Mm. And I kept looking today at the I am who I am. I've probably oh, seen that like 16,000 times. Mm. He's love. Yes. Yes. Today, yes. He's just love. He, yes, he is. I am, but I insert love in that because yes. he's just so good. And no matter what it is, I know he loves me. Oh, and mm. whether I'm going to stay out. Sorry, that's it. All right, he loves me. God, God, Amen. Yeah, put it on. But I'm gonna close up. I'm a toastmaster. I'm from a place where they clap when you go over. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Joshua chapter one. I'm gonna be quick. It says, now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses' servant, uh, thy servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, and the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. One thing about Joshua is he was the son of Nun. Somebody say Nun. No. Now, you got to understand where he came from. The son of Nun was one of the captives when the Egyptians were in slavery, which means he was oppressed. Somebody say oppressed. oppressed. And here you have little Joshua watching his dad coming from a place where they were oppressed. And now he watches Moses cross over the Red Sea. How many of y'all ever had somebody do something that was so significant that you felt like I ain't worthy to do that? Now, I served a great bishop. Bishop Winters can preach. That man was definitely the powerhouse of where I came from. But I realized when I was called, I said, I can't do what he does. But how many of you know, when you start looking at your problem and you start looking at where you came from, you may have came from the ghetto. You may have came from a less station. You may have came from a drinking problem. You may have came from drugs. You may have came from anything, but God's purpose is bigger than your problem. I feel like preaching right now. Give me a few more minutes and we're going to close up. Because he came from none, but his mother was Rahab. Now, if you know who Rahab was, Rahab hid the spies when they were being chased. So his mother had confidence, but his father came from where he was a coward. So he had a balanced theory, but in the middle of that, God said, "My, it doesn't matter what Moses did, I'm calling you. And if I called you, you have to be confident, not in you, but be confident in the call. Yeah. Because God knows what your issues, what your problems, with what you've been through. I don't care what hell you've been through. And I don't care who's judging you. If I called you, then you need to not worry about the judgment, but join me. I'm so sick of church people trying to figure out who God is calling. You don't know who God was calling. Screw your prophecy if it's not pointing into the direction where God is taking me. Because my problem doesn't stop my purpose. Because I might have came from none. But he's taking me to notoriety. So he might have been the son of none. Repeat that to me. Say, I might have came from none. But God's taking me to notoriety. Because his love, his love is greater than my lowliness. He loved me when I was eating out of trash can. He loved me when I had a habit. He loved me when I came into church, slithering and drunk everywhere. He loved me. He loves us. Oh, how. 
how he loves us. And you might not be worthy to preach it. You might not be worthy to take the people into the land. But if I got the spirit of God on coming, somebody say walk on. Walk on. Because I'm taking this land. It belongs to me. That's the difference between the church and the gangsters. The gangsters claim their corners. The church doesn't. Oh. That's why he's building a kingdom. And a kingdom colonizes wherever it goes. And it's your job to turn the earth into God's colony. So you got to be like the corner boy to say, for you can't come around here. This is my strip. Every time you go to work, this is my strip. Somebody say, this is my strip. When you go in your house, you say, this is my strip. In this house, we shall have peace. We shall have love. We shall have joy. We shall be together. We shall have communion. We shall have Jesus. We shall have worship. Because why? I'm taking over this strip. Because the gospel opens the door up for change. And he called you to take them into the land and stop looking at where you came from. Because he's worthy. You're worthy because he made you worthy. Somebody say, I'm worthy. And stop worrying about your sin. If you just worried about how, why you were sent and not why you sin, then you will get all of the spirit inside of you. Because sin does not become important when you understand where he sent you. And he told him to be courageous because it's not that he had a problem. It's God knew one was coming. And he already told him to be courageous. Why say be courageous? Fear not. Cast away not your confidence, which brings great recompense of reward. And I'm closing up because Joshua went from what? None? Somebody say none? To notoriety. Give God some praise all over. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Somebody give my helpers a hand. Amen. Pastor Rasan walked in and said, Y'all still on testimony? I said, No, this is it, bro. We going to the house. Amen. I had to put him on a timer. I don't, I don't have a timer, though. But, but, but we going to the house. Amen. God's love is so deep and so wide and it can't be measured and so I knew I couldn't do it by myself, amen? amen. And God put those people on my heart. I don't know why, but I think it worked out, amen? I think it worked out in his infinite wisdom, amen? I know everybody can come up here and do five minutes on God's love and being worthy and feeling unworthy, amen? The problem is we could probably do three hours on how we feel unworthy and probably can only do five minutes on why we're worthy. Amen. And that's what God's trying to get us to understand. In the past, I say three weeks, we've been stuck on being worthy. Apostle came in and said, stop looking at him and look at Jesus. Stop worrying about what's going on with the coronavirus. Somebody said they had the Heineken virus. Amen. <laughs> Stop worrying about it and, and worry about Jesus. Because if you get the coronavirus and you die, what's going to happen? You're going to see Jesus. And you know what that's because of? That's because of his love. Even unto death. Amen. Amen. I just wrote down a couple of things as God gave me inspiration. Um, again, I'm like everyone else. I just got a radical father. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Germantown High School. I went to Ada Lewis Middle School. I went to Greenfield Elementary School. I went to Get Set down in South Philly. Amen. Uh, if y'all know the Riddicks from South Philly, if y'all know the Joneses from South Philly, 23rd and Sears, 23rd and Wharton, amen. I moved to West Philly, 52nd and Market Street, amen. I seen a man get run over by the L and his whole body fell through the L. Then I moved to Northside, amen. I keep telling y'all, I'm just, I'm, I'm not from, I'm, I am Philly, amen. I'm citywide, amen, amen. When people love you, what does that do? You said encourages you. Mm -hmm. It draws you. Mm. The word. 
God loved us what? First. When you lift him up and you lift up God, God is what? Love. When you lift up God, when you lift up love, it draws you. How many people got a favorite aunt? Favorite uncle. That aunt and that uncle loved you when you were a kid. You didn't know nothing about love. You ever have an aunt and uncle from out of town? They come in and you like. <laughs> You are. <laughs> you are. You are. Who are you? But that aunt, that uncle that's been there, that loved you, mm -hmm. that watched you when your mom went out to the up jump the devil and the, the poom poom and the and the, and the after midnight hole. <laughs> Y'all too young, nobody after midnight. <laughs> Wagner's ball mm -hmm. Hey man, y'all don't know. Y'all know about the real stuff. They should talk about that old stuff. They had like bands and stuff. Did they have a band? Yeah, no, nah, we had DJs, MCs, breakers, graffiti writers, amen. <laughs> amen. But that aunt and that aunt, they loved you first. And it draws you in. Amen. When people come to hope, and I know Brother George and and and, and, and like Stefan and certain people that are out there and, they're, and they're, they're looking for love, that love draws them. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You can go to the big church, and there's nothing wrong with the big church. Mm -hmm. You can go to the smaller, smaller church than this, mm -hmm. but it's something about that love and the love of God that's going to draw you yeah. and it's going to keep you. Right. It's nothing but love that keeps people at hope. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what Sam talks about back in the day when we used to be across the street, and we used to play the drums. Tasha would be with no mic singing. And um, uh, what's her name? Lawson. Jay Lawson would come to church with no drumsticks. And Tasha would go get two twigs. And he'd play the drums with twigs. And we'd get out at 5 o'clock. Then we had to stay and, and eat. And eat um, trust these fish, amen, till 7 o'clock, amen. And then come back. And then, uh, I mean, it was love. Amen? But that love draws you. Man will stop loving you. Because of an infraction. Because of, uh, 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 of, of what happened. Because of disappointment. I heard Pastor Rasan say one time, he said, you be in love with somebody for 20 years. They do one thing. You get very upset. But guess what? You ready to get a divorce? You ready to you ready to, to, to cut them out the will? You yeah. ready to kill them? Yeah. But you all of a sudden didn't stop loving. Well, mm -hmm. you're upset. Mm -hmm. You're mad. You're angry. You ready to cut them off? You ready to, to wipe your hands clean? But love in one second does not stop. God doesn't stop loving. God doesn't stop loving. He doesn't stop loving. God is so disrespected. He's so disrespected. Who saw The Passion, the movie The Passion? How many people came out of that joint like, yeah, I got to change my life. Like, like he really did that for me. I have a friend to this day that a guy pulled a gun on me and he stood in front of me and he will, he can do no wrong in my eye. Amen, mm -hmm. amen, amen. I was like, you, you talk about love, ready to lay down your life. And he, I was probably 16, 17, and he was 18 or 19. And I was just like, whoa. Like laying down your life for someone, yeah. that that makes an impact. Mm -hmm. When you saw the passion and you saw what he went through, so that you can uh, uh, flourish, that you can be healed, set free, delivered, yeah. prosper, mm -hmm. like that, shakes you up. Yeah. Yeah. But he's so disrespectful. Yeah. We disrespect him every single day. 
But he doesn't stop loving us. He doesn't divorce us. He doesn't take us out of the inheritance. He doesn't let the infirmities come upon us. He doesn't take take what he gave us. He doesn't Indian give. Oh, I gave you this house, I'm gonna take it back. He doesn't allow the enemy to just come in and run rampant. He still loves you. You know what love does? It gives you power. Yes, yes, good word, yes. Good word. If you got one person that loves you, mm -hmm. and you know you can just draw on that love, it gives you power. Mm -hmm. It's the wind beneath your sails, or the yes. whatever, wind under my feet, wings under my, whatever, you know how. <laughs> George Bush said, you fool me once, you can, you, but the fool, you know, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Amen. You know what I'm saying. When I used to be, and I used to live in Nice Town, in my my home where I, where I grew up, where my formidable years were. Amen. And things would happen at school. Things would happen uh, at my little job. Things would happen with my girlfriend. Things would happen with the homies. Things would happen. Whatever. I always would say. I just got to make it home. Mm -hmm. I can just make it to my house. If I can just make it to my bedroom. If I can just make it to my bed. If I can just make it to a place where I know somebody's there that, that, there that loves me. Mm -hmm. You know, a parent can be so mad at you. That they're ready to just take you out. I brought you here. I'll take you out. <laughs> but they still love you. You know, a parent will, 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 will physically punish you, but it's truly out of love. How many people ever spanked their child? and felt horrible afterwards. But you knew that if you didn't spank them, you, I know me, I, I'll talk to them blue in the face. I had to go to some other language sometimes. I'm just being honest. Because you don't understand, you don't understand, thus say of the Lord, you shall obey your mother and your father, and your days will be long with you. You don't understand, I'll knock you out. <laughs> you don't understand. I pay all the bills around here. Da, da, da. But you understand. Sometimes you don't understand that. So sometimes maybe you need to know the gravity of the situation. And the gravity of the situation is when I knock, when I hit you, the gravity is going to pull you and you're going to see <laughs> that gravity is real. Yeah. <laughs> and that is a real situation. Because I don't want you to continue down this path of disobedience. I don't want you to continue down this path of carelessness, so forth and so on, to the fact where you, you, you grow in it. Yeah. Mm. You, you, you start to learn it. You start to understand how to move in it. Amen? Mm -hmm. So I have to try to knock it, what? Off of you. Right. Mm -hmm. Knock it out of you. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. A couple more points, and, and I'm going to extend if Pastor Rasan wants to do. Um, we're talking about God's love, how we feel unworthy, but how he has called us worthy. Amen? Amen. Amen. If you choose to do so. Um, Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. If you don't know anything else in this world. And you know that Jesus loves you. And that he died for you. And that he washed you. And that he cleansed you. And that when he sees you, all he sees is his perfection. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
See, we think of a pulpit. We think uh, uh, being a boy now and with a bullhorn. Mm. We think being on TV and his ministry. That's not ministry. That's a form of ministry, and it's needed. Mm. Amen. But your ministry is your is is the love of God that that shed abroad from your heart. Right. Amen. Rashin, since the day I met her, has exuded love. Amen? Yes. Yes. Aaliyah, since the day I met her, has just loved and loved and loved. And you be like, Aaliyah, like, stop. No, they wrong. No, and she just continues to love. Yes. Pastor Mike is a true pastor. He has a heart of love. Amen? Yes. Oh, yes. He, he stands out in Kensington and feed people. That's love. Amen. Yes. If you are a coach, a parent, a teacher, uh, uh, an employer, a boss, whatever your position of authority is, you know you have to deal with people differently. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's right. And God deals with each and every one of us differently. Each and every one of us. Because we are his children. Amen? Amen. See, we look, we look at things in a natural sense. And we look at things, and I know, I hear it sometimes, and, and sometimes I even, I think it. And I look at someone, and I'll be like, hmm, why God bless them? Is it because I did this? Is it because they did that? That's just the way God's dealing with them. I hear people, people, anybody ever count your money? <laughs> Pastor Sign, anybody ever count your money? <laughs> you, don't you wish, don't you wish they math was right? <laughs> people are always rounding up on my money. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Children do it a lot. Amen. But it's the way God deals with us. He's not blessing you according to... There, there are principles, amen. You sow, you reap. You reap what? Later. And you reap more. But you will reap. But God just... God deals with all his children differently. God loves everyone the same. How many people have multiple children? You love your children differently? I mean, the way you, the way you, you love them the same, but you deal with them differently. You have multiple children? You have multiple children? Who else have multiple? I only got one. Huh? Take, nah, I don't want no more. Amen. You got multiples? You got multiples? Multiples? You got one? You got multiple. You got sure. That's right. Amen. 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 I'm sorry. Amen. <laughs> I just see Aaron all the time. Amen. But you deal with them differently, right? But you love them what? The same. Yeah. Amen. God is love. The only person that calls you unworthy is who? Yourselves in error. And the only person that accuses the brother is Satan. If you touch one person's life with the love of God and make an impact in one person's life, just one. How much better do you think the world would be? Um, Just one person. I, I, I look around and we have a church member that comes and dances and lays around and hallelujahs. And I'll be ready to knock them out. Am I uh, I'm the only one? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. But I love them. I love them. Amen. I have no choice but to love them. That's right. 
Amen. He, he, he's a little different. I'm a little different. I may come here, somebody ready to knock me out. But I want somebody to love me. And build me up. Amen. And help me out. Aaliyah mentioned about the ordination service. And that ordination service was wonderful. A lot of people weren't in the church at that time or around, but a lot of people here were. Amen. And it was it, it was straight from heaven. Amen. Yeah. And a lot of people there, including myself, was like, why am I in this room? Right. Why are they laying hands on me? Why is all this pomp and circumstance? I don't, I'm not worthy, I'm not righteous in my own sight, amen, but God amen. called us worthy, That's right. amen. amen, a lot of people were struggling, a lot of people that was there to this day have done great things for God, wow. and if we would have, if we would have leaned on our own understanding, we would have said, nah, I'm good. I'm not a minister. I'm not an elder. I'm not a pastor. I'm not a teacher. I'm not an evangelist. I just want to come and sit in the church. I love sitting in that chair. I love it. When I get the text and be like, you up, I'll be like, oh. I can't sit in the chair. Amen. Bless you, sir. Amen. Pastor Sam, you have anything? Good. Mother White? You sure? Apostle? Amen. I, I'm not declining anyone else, but we're just we're going to put a nice little bow on it. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Mother Sharon? was doing her thing this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> you know you're about to be teaching soon, right? You know you're about to get a book. <laughs> yes. Amen. Deacon Scotty, everyone that contributed, everyone that helped me out, I, I thank you. I love you. I hope you love me back. Amen.